everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pound, man. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. We back up in here, man. 33 years of prison stories, man. I appreciate everybody rocking with me. I appreciate everybody showing me love, man. All the comments, man. All the likes. You know, we can get them up, but I appreciate all the ones we do get, man. If you're watching the video, I'm hoping you like it, man. So just hit the like and, you know, share your comments with me, man. I appreciate your uh, feedback. I appreciate your thoughts. You know, good, bad, or indifferent, just keep it respectful. Um, I'm gonna get back into these 33 years of prison stories, man, but I also wanna say, uh, I'm getting ready to just start doing little short stories as well, man. They're gonna be about 10, 15 minutes long, so y'all stay tuned for that. I'm working for y'all, man. I wanna get y'all this, this information out there. You know, every time I hear somebody who write me or hit me in the comments and tell me, man, my videos had an impact on their life, impact on their decisions. That just warms my heart. That gives me more motivation. I keep going. I push harder. So uh, I'm going to start dropping these little short stories, man. Just little, little, little things to give y'all a little insights on a couple of little individuals or incidents that I've uh, ran across over the years, man. Some funny, some crazy, some out there. But I'm going to start dropping them so y'all stay tuned. I should start this week. Also, man, I want to try to get up this, get these numbers up, man. Let's get to 100K, baby. Let's get to 100K. We're on the road to 100K. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell his friend to tell everybody else that they know about this movement we got going on over here, man. This positive energy. So y'all come on, join with it, man. Shout out to everybody who showed me love over this past uh, couple of months, man. Adam22 and No Jumper. If you ain't seen that interview, please go check it out. Uh, shout out to uh, Freeway Ricky Ross, the real Rick Ross. If you have not seen that uh, interview I did on my page with him, Please go check it out. Shout out to CC Reacts. She doing big things over there. Big numbers with her her uh, YouTube. Uh, shout out to her for coming through. Shout out to uh, Veracity Exchange TV for the interview I did. All these interviews, if y'all have not seen them, y'all go check them out. Um, they all got some good content with it, man, and all some good some good talk, man, and some good knowledge in there for y'all. So y'all go check them out. Right now, man, this story right here. I was talking about this the other day with somebody brought it up in my memory, so I wanted to drop it on y'all. It is a crazy story, man. Um, it's about this dude named Tarzan. Yes, that's what we called him, Tarzan. And I was on Mecklenburg at the time. I remember it was like uh, between 91. It had to be between 91 and 93. Yeah, 90 or either 90 through 93. It was in between this era right here, this time frame. But I remember being on Mecklenburg. As y'all know, I went to Mecklenburg, you know, because I had the, uh, you know, the attempted murder charge on Big Raymond. And uh, they went ahead on to send me to Mecklenburg, man. At this time, Mecklenburg was, the, you know, the, the, the last stop. This was before they had the King Mountains, the Sussex Ones and Twos and Red Onions and Wallace Ridge. You go to Mecklenburg. Mecklenburg was where all the so-called uh, trouble inmates were. Uh, Death Row was on Mecklenburg, so it was the last stop for you if you was getting in trouble, man, because uh, trust me, they had something there for you, you know, they they had something there for you, and or they would bury you in the hole and leave you there, as dudes who's been in the hole on Mecklenburg for uh, double digit years, man, 10, 15, uh, 20 years in segregation, so they got something for you if you, uh, if you get up there and get to acting up, so this is why they send you to Mecklenburg. When you know you a little bit out of control on the regular institutions. So I ended up on Mecklenburg, man. And I can remember when I first um, came across the dude Tarzan, man. He was a wild dude, man. I never really knew why they gave him that name or whether he had that name before he came to prison or not. But I could see why he had that name because he always walked around, man. You know, especially in the summertime with no shirt on, jean cut off shorts. He had all these ace bandages wrapped around his wrists and stuff, you know, like he a weightlifter or something, which he was, he had decent size to him, man. He probably was about, probably about six feet, maybe six one, um, you know, slim frame, but cut up with little, little size and stuff on him. 
And every time we go outside, man, he get on the basketball court. He'll play basketball a lot. But when he won't play basketball, man, this dude was working out all the time, man. He he stayed doing pull-ups or pull-ups or climbing all on the fence like a spider, climbing up on the basketball pole and get up and, and get behind the backboard and stand there while dude's playing basketball. He's standing on the top of the uh, the, the, the back of the basketball rim, man, and tell the police or somebody tell him to get down. He was always climbing on stuff, even in the block. In, instead of taking the stairs, he'd jump across the rails and, you know, jump down like a little spider monkey or something, man. He, he was a wild dude, man. He, he was a little bit out there, if you ask me. You know, he, he just had weird ways about him. But he always was working out and he always, you know, stayed lifting weights or either, you know, doing some type of calisthenics, some type of running or something like that. I didn't really inter interact with him too much because, like I say, he was a little bit too weird for me. And mind you, you know, like I said, we talk about from 90 to 93, you know, I got locked up in 87. So you talking about 87, 88, 89, 91, and 293. I'm fairly new into my bit, man, you know, five, six, seven years in my bit. So penitentiary is still new to me. I'm still learning ways about the penitentiary. I'm still learning the dynamics. I'm still learning how things move, how people act, the strangeness of you know, people in prison compared to people out here in the free world. You know, what's strange to people out there in the free world is normal to people here in prison. So I'm still, you know, getting that registered in my head because I'm seeing stuff to me that looks, you know, super abnormal. <laughs> and these dudes is acting like it's regular stuff. So, you know, like I say, being on there and watching him, he was just a dude that I categorized as, okay, you know, keep my eye on him. He a little, he a little tata. -ta, you know, uh, definitely a little tata. -ta. So I remember, you know, like I said, I used to see him outside all the time because he wanted my building. You know, so every time we went outside, I used to see him. And he was more, more or less a loner, man. He always stayed to himself. He didn't really have no whole lot of partners, and I can see why. He ain't had no whole lot of partners. He just always did his thing. I, I, I remember him getting in incidents though. You know, he won't, he won't no sucker. You know, as far as being scared, he'll fight. I seen him get the fight one time on the basketball court. The first time I seen him get the fight, I seen him get the fight on the basketball court a couple of times. The first time I seen him get the fight on the basketball court, which anybody will tell you they've been in prison. If you get on that basketball court, man, nine times out of ten, if you own there enough, you're gonna have some type of problems. Cause everybody and their mama on the basketball court in penitentiary think they Michael Jordan and don't nobody want to be Scottie Pippen. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the way it goes on that basketball court in prison. Is more like rugby, rugby ball than basketball. Dudes is airborne dudes, man. Dudes losing teeth. Dudes getting cuts on their face. Dudes getting stitches. Dudes getting rumbling on there. Uh, the basketball court will lead from you you arguing on the court to spilling over into the into the uh, yard with dudes and went back to their cell and got that Bethlehem and came out there addressing a basketball game. It, it's just insanity, man. And a lot of people would say, well, why, why, why dudes play basketball in prison if all of this go on with it? What else you got to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got too much else to do in prison. You know, you exercise, read, you know, do things like that, play cards, gamble. But it's not a whole lot of, you know, things to do in prison. So basketball is a, is a, is a, um, a great exercise. It's great cardio. And it's, it's a, a great uh, waste of time when you can just knock off hours and have something to do and you you know you getting in shape as well so it, it you know it's, it's, it's a lot of byproducts to just playing basketball opposed to all the uh negativity that comes with it as well so like i say it, we're in an environment where we're in prison everything is going to be negative anyway so you're going to just have to make the best out of it and try to get out of it what you can but it's definitely going to be some problems on that basketball court i've had my share of problems on that basketball court Eventually, later on in the years, it took a long time, though, but I eventually stopped playing. It ain't like I was ever Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen, you know what I'm saying? But I enjoyed playing because it was exercise. And for the most part, you know, I, I can get a couple of things done out there. But, man, they had some high flyers in prison. I'm talking about dudes that, you know, that could have possibly been in the NBA. And I've ran into dudes like that that was, you know, en route to the NBA and end up getting crossed up and locked up. I ran into dudes that played college ball. I ran into dudes that you look at and you know they could have made the NBA or a good college team. But, you know, their circumstances led them to prison, and that's where they was at. So it would be a lot of things going on on that basketball court, man. Um, but 
I seen Tarzan on there one time and he was arguing with a dude, you know, same thing about a bunch of nonsense. Dude said he fouled him, he said he didn't, you know, and the dude just hauled off and smacked him. I mean, he didn't even punch him. He just hauled off and smacked him. Bah! So, man, Tarzan just scooped him up, you know, like some, some, some WWE stuff and slammed him to the concrete so hard, man, when he slammed him to the concrete, boom, the dude head hit the concrete and his head immediately bust open. You could see as soon as his head hit the concrete, you just saw a, a pool of red blood just start spreading out. And the dude went unconscious. But, you know, like I say, Tarzan was on top of him. This prison, you know, and dudes got to do what they got to do. Tarzan was on top of him, punched him in the face about two times. Back up, back up. You know what I'm saying? And then just got up off of him and walked away. You know, then he laying in the middle of the court with, you know, bleeding and everything. So he done stopped the whole game. So dudes is mad about the game being stopped. They not even worried about the dude, you know, potential, uh, uh, life-threatening injuries, they worried about the game being stopped. So now we got to wait. Then when the police come, the police notice it. Once they notice it, they're going to come in. They're going to clear the yard. Everybody going to have to get up off the yard. Wreck is over. That's all they worrying about, man. Y'all y'all done messed the wreck up, man, with that fool. Woo, woo, woo. That's, that's what dude's concern is. Not even a drip about him. You know what I'm saying? Not even a drip about him. That's what I'm telling you, young fellas. Take note. Your life is your own in there, man, and you're on your own. You know, dudes ain't going to try to age you, help you, or do nothing like that because that's considered taboo. You know, if a dude age you or help you, he got to be down with you, and he going to have to be down with that smoke that's going to come with it. You know, so evidently, when nobody rocking with dude, he sat right there, man, probably about 10 minutes, you know, before he started coming to consciousness. Probably took about five, 10 more minutes for the police to get there, get him out there, get him to medical, or get him get him to ADDD, and they locked the yard down to, you know, Tarzan ain't even get locked up. Dude ain't tell on him. Ain't nobody on the yard gonna tell. Especially not on Mecklenburg. And especially not if you want somebody to find out because they will find the police on Mecklenburg to come back and tell, oh yeah, such such told who did it. You know, so if that happens, you cook. You know, if this ain't the later part of penitentiary whereas to these dudes take telling like it's a sport. This was the early part of my bit whereas dudes knew you was telling and you was going to end up having to be in PC or either worse, you know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna put that Bethlehem in you because they not gonna want you around them because they don't know if you gonna tell on them. And it ain't no telling what dudes doing in prison, man. Dudes got all types of stuff going on in there that they can't afford to have somebody around them that might be dropping a dime on them or telling on them, so they gonna get rid of you. You know, one way or another, they gonna get rid of you. If they even have to confront you, you know, first face, look, man, I heard you telling, man, I heard you hot, bro, you got to get up out here. Nah, I ain't telling, man, they, they, who said? Don't make no difference, bro. If you can't prove you ain't hot, you got to get up out here. And then if they tell you who said that you hot, if you don't go step to them and do something to them, then, you know what I'm saying, it's the same thing. It's as if you really is. So that's the way it was when I first came in. So ain't nobody tell us so who Tarzan got away with that. I seen him get to fight another time on the basketball court with a dude. Uh, and yeah, he had to scrap this time because this dude was a... Uh, this dude was, was getting him the business. You know, he was rumbling with him. They both got it in. If I really had to say it was probably about a draw, you know, both of them drew blood. Both of them, you know what I'm saying, had some good moves. And Tarzan kind of strong, you know. I guess that's probably why they called him Tarzan. He done picked the dude up and slammed the dude a couple of times, but the dude kept getting up. You know, and as he getting up, man, he's swinging blows. They kind of like uncoordinated, but they swinging, but they connecting and hitting each other. Bang, bang, bang. You know, bang, 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 he hit him back. So they had a good little scrap out there, man, until the police came out there, broke it up. Both of them got locked up during that time. You know, both of them got took up out of there. But like I say, for the most part, though, it was known that he would fight. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he he, he won't no suffer. You know, but like I said, he was a weird dude. He had a lot of weirdness to him, and he did a lot of strange things, man. You know, like I say, they say, but this was before I was in the block with him. I ended up being in the block with him. But they say, man, he do weird stuff, man. Like he get the food, you know, because on Metlenburg, they fed on the inside of the building. They had the kitchen closed down when I was there. Kitchen was closed down. All food was fed inside the block. They bring around the hot box, you know, with the kitchen workers and the kitchen supervisors. It's a big old steel hot box. They plug it up, keep the food hot. They call you to the bars one by one and give you a tray, you know what I'm saying, three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, you know, so we ate on the inside of the block, which they had, you know, tables out there in the block. They used to always say, Tarzan used to get his tray and go over and sit on the floor, Indian style on the floor, and eat his tray in the corner. You know what I'm saying? 
like I say, we do, man. You know what I'm saying? Later on, when I ended up in the block with him, that wasn't no room, but that was actually true. I've seen him do it several times, you know? And then, like I say, the dude, man, you meet a lot of dudes like him in prison. A lot of dudes is, you know, they march to their own drum. They, they move to their own beat. And, and you can't figure that stuff out. You can try all you want to to figure it out. You're not going to be able to figure out why dudes do what they do. It's just really a waste of time. Only thing you can do is look at it and just say the dude weird or you just being all oh, like, why he doing that? But if you waste your energy and your time trying to figure out why somebody doing what they doing or why they are the way they are, you will not be paying attention to something that's going on around you that you need to be paying attention to. Yeah, you need to be paying attention to everything, man, because it's so many moving parts around you, man. There's so many different dudes and the way they act and the, and, and the personalities and the attitudes and the danger that you got to be paying attention. Then you got the police. They coming at you with crazy stuff. All of this foolishness be going on, you know what I'm saying, in prison. And when you new and you green in there, you just learning about what's going on, you ain't got time to be worried about other people's problems. You got to be worried about your own problems. You need to take note of everything that's going on around you. But at the same time, you got to compartmentalize that stuff and be more focused on what, how your life is going and what you're going to do and who you're going to be associated with. Because the people you associated with is also going to be determined how people look at you. You know, if you hanging around with these people that got no respect, dudes ain't going to give you no respect. If you around these dudes that got major respect, dudes going to look at you with respect. If you talk like you, you know, not scared and like you know what you mean and mean what you say, people going to pay attention to that. Now, like I say, it ain't going to me. I heard all these other dudes say they did four years, five years, eight years, ten years, you know, whatever. And they ain't never had no problems. I don't know nobody like that. <laughs> I just don't. You know what I'm saying? In 33 years... I've never known nobody not to have no problems in prison. Like I say, I know dudes that have minimal problems or don't get into nothing real serious, but most definitely they had some problems, they had some altercations, they had some run-ins because that's just the nature of the environment that you're in. People are going to come at you with foolishness all day, whether you into it or not, whether you feed into it or not, they're going to come at you with that. That's a guarantee because, like I say, the nature of the environment. If not them, the police, you know what I'm saying, meaning the COs, they're going to come at you with foolishness. You know, and like I say, for the most part, Mecklenburg had a lot of COs that was really veterans. They was really, they had been around a while or either they had came from another prison or either they came from some type of uh, uh, a higher level security or whatever to be working on Mecklenburg. Because like I say, Mecklenburg was considered one of the highest um, security rates in, in the state of Virginia at that time before they built all these supermax. Mecklenburg was the last stop. You either going to Mecklenburg or you going to M building on Pytan in the hole. So, like I say, Mecklenburg was, was, was the end of it. And I told y'all before in previous videos, they only had like a couple of hundred people on population. They only had, I don't even think they had a thousand people on Mecklenburg. I remember Derek S, man, shout out to him. He used to be a CO there. He'd be in the comments. He part of TBP, salute. I think he said the numbers on there one time of what they was. I can't remember exactly what it was. But I do know if you get locked up on Mecklenburg and you go back there in that hole, you back there for a minute because you're going on the waiting list to come back out of there, even when your time is served for whatever you went back there for because there's so many people waiting to get on the yard because there's only a limited amount of bed space. When I was on there, all the sales were single sales. That's the only real benefit about being on Mecklenburg. You can sleep by yourself because you had a single sale. You ain't got to worry about waking up at night, getting in the beef with your selling. You ain't got to worry about nobody trying to stab you when you sleep because you get your door closed. Your door closed. Can't nobody open it but you. You the only one that can go in and out because you ain't got no selling. You know, you use the bathroom in peace. You can wash yourself up in peace. You can watch TV in peace. It's a little benefits to that. A lot more benefits if you really ask me than being in the cell with someone else. So that was the only really great thing about Mecklenburg. Well, in retrospect to me, also too that... I learned later on during it, you know, by time, as time went on, that Mecklenburg was one of the best places I, I was at because of the simple fact that you know everybody and you know who's who. It ain't no whole lot of dudes doing no whole lot of faking on Mecklenburg because if it is, you're going to get exposed. And then, like I say, nine times out of ten, if you came there, you came there because you either, you know, did some type of violence on another institution to an inmate or, or either a staff. So that's, that's really the criteria to get on Mecklenburg. And the other criteria, I guess she was going to death row, which <laughs> I didn't think anybody wanted to do that. But, you know, that was the criteria for Mecklenburg. Everybody was up there was already, you know, some type of disciplinary problem on another institution. So that's how they got there. So you had to view everybody in that light 
that this dude is a potential threat. It, I mean, regardless of what he looked like, regardless of his his, his, his nationality, regardless of, of his size, you had to view him as a threat because he came there for some type of some type of ruckus, you know. So, like I said, I don't know why Tarzan came there. I don't know what he came there for. I just knew he was a weird dude, and he was always into a bunch of you know foolishness when you look at him. I seen him a lot talking to to, to when he did congregate or he did hang with people. I see him talking to a lot of white dudes, you know, and the white dudes I seen him talking to normally he'll be outside with them, trying to work out with them, try to show them different workouts. Cause like I say, the dude was a workout machine. So I used to see him doing a lot of that. I always thought, you know, as you know, I'm new in penitentiary, but I'm starting to see things. And you know, like I say, the the uh, the homosexuality in there is deep. I mean, it's deep. It's everywhere. I've never been on an institution that's not a part of the institution. So normally, you know, uh, sad but true, it'd be, the, it'd be the white dudes that usually become victims. If it's a black dude that's homosexual, normally it's his, he don't chose to be that, but that's not always the case. Sometimes someone will turn them into a homosexual as well by either raping them or abusing them or whatever. But the white dudes, they are always at risk for somebody to come at them with that type of angle. So I used to always look at it and thinking that Tarzan was with these little white dudes because they was always little meek white dudes or whatever, you know, and how they got on Mecklenburg, I don't know because like I said, you suppose they had to do something. But also, too, every now and then, they'll put people on Mecklenburg that just came through receiving, you know what I'm saying? They might have just came through receiving and haven't been nowhere. So they might be there for a little while to get processed before they go somewhere else. But, you know, rarely you will see, you know, a white dude on there unless he running or he done did something to somebody else on another institution out of fear. And wanted to get up off the institution or somebody and told him something or made him do something he didn't want to do, did it, got away with it, went to the whole scared to go back on the yard and send him to Mecklenburg. You know, so little do we know when he get on the yard on Mecklenburg, it's going to be even that much worse. You know what I'm saying? Way worse. You know what I'm saying? So I used to see him with the little white boys working out with him and stuff like that. So I thought, that, you know, he was, you know, trying to mess with the white boys or trying to turn one of the white dudes out or something like that. That was always my initial thought in my own mind. I didn't give it a lot of thought, but that's what I thought when I seen him with him. Because like I said, the only person that I ever really saw him congregating with was white dudes. Every now and then, like I say, I see him talking to a black dude or whatever. Or he'll be, you know, talking to him when we're doing sports, playing basketball or something. He played baseball too. They had a lot of softball games on there. They play a lot of softball and stuff like that. But like I say, the dude was a workout machine. He stayed on the yard jogging, doing push-ups. Climbing all on the fence, climbing up poles, climbing up the side of the, uh, a building. I mean, he just was a, a, a weird dude. It wasn't nothing for you to hear the police say, Tarzan, get down up off of there. Get down up off of here. He had to jump down or something. He'll climb up the side of the building, man, while we standing out there waiting to go in the commissary. You know, because when you come out, you got the commissary jump right here. And you got the yard right there, too, a small yard where they lifting weights, playing cards, playing basketball. But right there is the, also the opening to... You know, where the commissary at, where dudes is lined up to go to the commissary. Man, he might be out there climbing up and down the bars and, and climbing up the side of the building, uh, walking around with the weights on, on his shoulder with no shirt on, just doing weird, crazy stuff, man. You know, so I always just looked at the dude like I thought something was wrong with him. So later on, uh, I ended up getting into a little small altercation with somebody, and um, it was some foolishness. You know what I'm saying? Pure foolishness, which it always is. But like I say, you on Mecklenburg, you got to handle your business emphatically. And I didn't want to go to jail because, like I said, I know the dynamics. You go to jail in there, you know, telling when you're going to come out. You know what I'm saying? But I got into a little altercation with a dude, man. We go back in the laundry room, man. That's what you do on Mecklenburg. You go back in the laundry room and you try to scrap back there and go ahead and leave the situation alone and hope don't nobody get caught. You ain't got to go to jail. You go in the laundry room so you don't be seen. So you can possibly not go to jail. But if somebody get hurt bad enough, they got to go to medical, boom, 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 something going to go on or whatever, or somebody see it, like the police, because the police could see the laundry room to a certain extent. If they went all the way over to the corner of the uh, booth, they can look up in the laundry room and see what was going on up there, or if they heard noise or whatever, whatever. When me and the dude go up there one day because he running his mouth, and he going to tell me, come to the laundry room. So I told him, you know, my normal, I, I ain't going to meet you there. I'm going to beat you there. You know, so I go jet straight on up there. 
So he comes up in there. When he comes up in there, he wanted to run his mouth. I think I had told y'all this before on the joint. I ain't even talked to him before he can get the words out of his mouth. Pop, pop, pop. You know, he ain't know how to duck the hook. But, you know, he ended up getting the hook hitting him. And when it hit him, he, boom, fall up against the washing machine because that's the washing room up there. So he fall up against the washing machine, get on up, look at me, try to charge me again. Boom, hit him again. He fall down, he get up, he roll on out. You know, but he bust up because them, hey, these knuckles be hurting. You know what I'm saying? So he busted up, but he walking up out there, he leaking his stuff, and the lady in the booth see him, and she called him. You know, and his scared, dumb butt, he goes down there too. So while he down there talking to her, then I come out, so I see her eye revert to me, and she see me. So now she see me, and I guess he talked to her, trying to tell her, oh, ain't nothing, ain't it's all good. Whoa, 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 yeah, I was back there. I was just working out, you know what I'm saying? Boom, 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 all the stuff. And the lady don't go for it, man. She called the people. So I ended up getting locked up. He ended up getting locked up. But when he get back there, he stick to his story, say, I ain't do nothing to him. I stick to my story, say, I ain't do nothing to him as well. And eventually they let us out, maybe a couple of weeks or whatever. I got lucky, you know what I'm saying, to get back out there because the charge ain't stick and it was bed. So, but the bed that was open for me when I came out was in a whole nother building. So when I go to the whole other building and now I'm in the block, they put me right in the block with... Tarzan, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in the building with Tarzan, man, and uh, I, like I say, that's when I used to see the witness. I used to see him sitting down, you know, in the Indian stands, you know, doing all that foolishness like that, you know, eating like that, you know, walking around, he eat with his hands too. Sometimes he don't even use the utensils, he'll just be eating with his hands. And the dude stood around in the block all day, it's like he didn't want to never wear a shirt, man. Ever wear a shirt. And he had all this weird stuff wrapped around his his wrist. Then he might have a, a, a bandana wrapped around his thigh. Uh, might have a bandana on his head. He, he was just out there, man, like a, a a black hippie or something. You see what I'm saying? He was like a black hippie, man, or just a, a dude that was just, you know, marching to his own beat. <coughs> Anybody would look at him on sight and say the dude look weird. And he act weird, you know. But they had some dudes in the block that was okay, man. There was a white dude in there. There was an older dude, man. He was known for putting in a little work. Dudes gave him a little respect or something. And he used to hang with this little Puerto Rican dude named Chico. To my understanding, Chico had been on there for years too, maybe 16, 17 years or something. So Chico was like super funny and super skinny, small. Little bitty frail dude, man, but he was straight Puerto Rican through and through, one of them New York Puerto Ricans, you know, like, you know, that's how he talked and everything was, it was all New York, you understand? Yes, yeah, son, you know, all of that type of stuff. But he was like, man, that dude probably was like five, eight, five, nine at the most. He probably ain't no way no more than a hundred, probably 130 pounds, man. Super skinny, man. His, his whole arm was about the size of my wrist. You know, his legs about the size of my arms. He just was a little bitty dude. And he loved to get drunk. He gonna make that wine or he gonna have somebody else make that wine. And when that wine come out, man, he just turns into a different dude, man. He gets super drunk. And when I talk about super drunk, I'm talking about the type of drunk where he's stumbling and slurred speech and he can't talk and he can't stand up and they knew he stayed drunk but for the most part I will say this too and anybody who's on Mecklenburg to tell you that that was one institution that did not worry too much about that alcohol they didn't worry too much about that wine and that alcohol they were more concerned was about them drugs and them Bethlehems that's all they was worried about whether you was trying to kill somebody or you was trying to get somebody high where they might OD things that they really had to worry about they didn't care too much about the alcohol because if you made that and you just stayed in your block or you ain't get to fight or nothing like that, they won't trip it. You know, they had a dude on there. I think his name was Johnny Walker, man. And, uh, Derek Essa tell you it's probably that. I think it was Johnny Walker. Or either they used to call him Johnny Walker, which is the same name as the liquor, which is ironic because he was a straight alcoholic. <laughs> he was a size in the summer. He was a straight alcoholic. I have seen this dude come in the block myself and find wine and smell it. Wine. Who got it? And he'll oh, what? And step in the cell and give me a cup. And take a hit out of the cup and buck a whole cup of it. Buck a whole cup of the wine itself, man. And then walk about there and then he be telling people, look, if I heard the noise about y'all in here uh, uh, fighting or something over that wine, I'm coming to get it. 
I know who got them, get you charged in it, but you just drunk, son. I'm telling y'all, y'all just keep it cool, ain't got no problem. And he'll roll out, you know what I'm saying? But he'll always come in there and grab some liquor. If he knows some liquor in there, somebody tell him liquor in there, he coming in there to get him a drink. He ain't coming in there to bust you. He coming in there to get him a drink, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I can remember him, man, like I say, coming around and stuff like that. But Chico, man, Chico stayed drunk. And when he get drunk, man, he just walk around and block. He like, <laughs> What's up? What's up, Mikey, man? What's up? What's up, son? What's up, son? You know, hey, they got that good drink down there. Boy, you want some drink? And he just be just, like, stumbling, falling down. He's so little, and then he just get to talking all gangster then. And I used to be always looking at Chico like, man, I, he can't do nothing to nobody. I, I mean, physically. I couldn't see him doing nothing to nobody. I don't know. People respected him though. They gave him respect. I didn't know why. I never even tried to figure out why. So evidently he might have put some work in somewhere else or, or, or I don't know. Or maybe whatever he was affiliated with. I didn't know. I knew he did get respect. And like I say, when he get drunk, man, he gets so belligerent, man, and so crazy. And then he started talking gangsta. I just seen him scream on people and everything, call them all types of bees and peas. And, and you know, when he drunk, like, what are you going to do? You want to do something? F you, yeah, yeah, what's up? And his homeboys always had to come get him and drag him and take him on in the cell, set him down and calm him down because he'll get belligerent and he'll get out of, out of pocket every time he get drunk. Bar none, you know what I'm saying? And man, little did I know, man, Chico would open my eyes up to a whole lot of things that I knew nothing about because I'm green, I'm new in the penitentiary. I'm, you know, within five, six, seven years. He opened my eyes to a whole lot of things I knew nothing about, especially Tarzan. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.